Tech Tribe, it's your girl Michelle here. Today we're going to be doing something that I find fun. I hope you guys will find it fun as well. We are going to be doing a part one to my horror book haul. So over the past month, maybe two months, I have been getting like super obsessed, or should I say re-obsessed with reading horror novels. I've always been obsessed with the horror genre, but for some reason recently that, that interest and that passion has just kind of been reignited. So I've just, oh my god, I've been buying up just about every horror novel I can get my hands on, which is probably a bad thing. <laughs> now I will say that some of you booktubers out here are definitely to blame with for some of these purchases. But I've actually been really enjoying looking up and watching some different booktubers here on YouTube um, because it just kind of helps me get a fresh perspective on, you know, what contemporary horror consists of and it also gives me some ideas for books that I might want to try. So I have been doing that. Um, I've also been subscribing to some different horror book subscription boxes, I guess you could call them. <laughs> Um, I just did an Abominable Book Club unboxing for you guys. I also subscribed to Creepy Crate. They usually involve a book or two. And I'm really wanting to try and get in on Nightworms. Um, so hopefully that will be something in the future. I'm also subscribed to My Thrill Club, but that one may or may not be continuing. We'll see how the next couple of boxes go. But anyway, I digress. So her some of the booktubers I have been watching, such as Merce from Harpies in the Trees and Jordaline from Jordaline Reads, um, also from Zach's Books, or is it Zach's Reads? Zach's Books, um, and a bunch of different other booktubers. If I am able to, I will link some of them down below so you can go check out their channels because they're awesome, they're amazing. They give the most entertaining descriptions of new upcoming and even some vintage horror books that I've ever heard so I'm slowly going through a lot of their um, book reviews and their recommendations so this is just literally part one of some of the books that I have bought probably just within the past month so some of these are based off of some of the people I have just mentioned their recommendations and some were just some random purchases that I felt I needed in my life so let's get started. So up first we have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. It is Grady, right? Yes, Grady Hendrix. If you are interested in books, especially horror novels at all, you have probably seen this sucker circulating all over booktube <laughs> and bookstagram as I've been hearing it referenced, which is, you know, Instagram, but you know, the subgenre for all of us book nerds. This cover literally was the selling piece for me because look at it. Also, I am obsessed with demonology, so all books having anything to do with demonic possession or exorcisms, they're probably going to be purchased by yours truly. So, there's that. This book though just looked really interesting. I think the first time I saw it was on, oh god, probably Harpies in the Trees just because I watched most of her videos first, just because I love her aesthetic and all of that goodness. And then I saw it mentioned again on Jordaline Reads. Um, I've just seen it mentioned by everyone and there's, a, there's some mixed reviews here and there. You know, some people like it, some people not so much, but I knew that I had to try it just based off of the cover and just based off the fact that it is about demonic possession. So let me just read you the synopsis real quick and you can decide for yourself whether or not you might wanna pick this one up. All of these books I will eventually be doing book reviews for, but right now I'm just doing a haul. So in the haul video, we're just going to be going over the synopses. I haven't actually read any of these books in this book haul ever. So we're on this journey together to read these new books. So anyway, my best friend's exorcism. So the synopsis on the back says, um, high school sophomores Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade. But after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act different. She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigation leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time their story reaches its terrifying conclusion, 
the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Um, like an unholy hybrid of beaches and the exorcist, my best friend's exorcism blends teen angst, adolescent drama, unspeakable horrors, and a mix of 80s pop songs into a pulse-pounding supernatural thriller. Yes. Just yes. So, like, a, a lot of this cover and a lot of the mention of, like, the 80s and stuff also made me think of Stranger Things. I know, two totally unrelated stories, but I don't know, it just kind of made me feel that same feeling I had when I first started watching Stranger Things. So, I'm loving it so far, and it's not a huge read, you know, so here's the back with the synopsis, here's the front, absolutely beautiful. So, I'll be definitely reading that, it is on my to-read list for this year. I'm not really going to be doing TBRs for each month just because I'm about to start school again soon and I don't want to commit myself to reading too many books each month when I know I'm going to be up to my eyeballs in textbooks pretty soon. So, book number one. The second one that, uh, and I, I want to say that these are somewhat in order of a win I purchased them this month. Um, but. They, they, they're probably not. They're probably not. So this is actually a vintage book. I don't know if it's vintage. It's a used book that I picked up at Half Price Books. Um, I want to say in Houston, somewhere like that. It's called The Unholy by Paul Stewart Kemp. And it looks like this book actually came over here from the UK because on the back, the first price point is from the UK. If you see that. So it might have, it might not. So anyway, the synopsis says, in an old forester's cottage in rural Southern England, Irene and Michael Ryder, a young married couple, decide one night to play the Ouija. What they invite into their new home begins to take its toll not only on their lives, but also on the lives of those around them and the lives of their as yet unborn children. Trapped in a world in which they no longer have choices, they struggle to raise the idyllic family of which they've always dreamed. The birds in the trees are watching them, waiting for some eternal event, but the ancient evil that sits behind their eyes has time on its hands, time enough to wait forever. Paul Stewart Kemp is one of England's darkest writers. The unholy takes the reader into his darkest world yet a place of demonic possession of nightmarish visions and creatures and the destruction of an entire family. But only at the heart of this world can true values be found. The resilience of love, the sanctity of marriage, and what it means to be human. So this sounds really interesting. It's also kind of on the smaller side, which I love because right now I'm powering through the last little bit of it and it will be fantastic to read some books this year that are much easier, much quicker, um, don't get me wrong, I am enjoying it very much, but, you know, some stories can be a little shorter. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the second one that I purchased. This next one is called The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. I had to pick this one up. Merce from Harvey's in the Trees, this is your fault. <laughs> because I watched your review on this book and just the just the description that was given about this book just the the way the writing was described as kind of like this creepy cozy kind of almost like a, a nostalgic haunted house story which don't get me wrong I love a good haunted house story um, I love ghosts I literally love all things paranormal and supernatural I love a good creature feature um, now I will say that most of my horror novels kind of circulate or circulate is that even the right word? They kind of focus on demonic possession just because that's where my interest lies. But I do love just your classic kind of ghost story. Haunted houses, love them. But yeah, so I'll give you the synopsis for The Haunting of Ashburn House. This one has some really good reviews. Darcy Coates is uh, very well known in the horror community. And so far I'm hearing nothing but good things. So here's the synopsis. There's something wrong with Ashburn House. Duh. <laughs> Everyone knows about Ashburn House. They whisper that its old owner went mad and restless ghosts still walk the halls. 
But when Adrian, desperate and in need of a place to stay, inherits the crumbling old mansion, she only sees it as a lifeline until darkness falls. Strange messages are etched into the walls, furniture moves when she leaves the room, and a grave hidden in the depths of the forest hints at a terrible, unforgivable secret. Something twisted lives in her house, its hungry eyes ever watchful. Chasing the threads of a decades-old mystery, it isn't long before she realizes she's become prey to something deeply unnatural and intensely resentful. She has no idea how to escape. She has no idea how to survive. Only one thing is certain. Ashburn's dead are not at rest. Mm, I like it. I like it. And like the, the typing is a decent size. Again, kind of a, a smaller read. Um, it's actually raining while I film this and it just kind of made me feel like, you know, cozy sweater weather, even though it's like so hot in Texas already. <laughs> but this is the type of book I would immediately pick up on like a kind of a chilly, rainy afternoon where you don't really have anything planned. Just grabbing a hot beverage, wrapping up the blanket and reading this book. That's what I think of. That's what I'm kind of saving this book for. It's just like a rainy day. But I will be getting to this book at some point this year. I may actually save this for the fall just because around, as we get a little bit closer to Halloween, I just love picking up ghost stories just because it brings out that nostalgia. So I may save it for October, but I might read it sooner. Who knows? Um, the next one is also a little vintage used book that I picked up at the um, Half Price Books even though it says Walmart on the front. This one is called Prime Evil by Judith Kelman. That's pretty neat. And again, tiny little read. I could probably read this in just a couple of days, so that's nice. Um, the synopsis says, it was a rambling Victorian mansion, a maze of odd rooms and passageways. Some thought it charming, others called it quaint, but Erica knew better. She had come to Bramble Farm to work on the final novel of the illustrious Teresa Bricklin and to find a safe haven in which to bear her child. But from the first moment, Erica knew that something was not right, and with every passing day, her sanity and life come closer to the edge. For behind the closed doors of Bramble Farm, a terrifying secret awaits. So the synopsis is not very, like, giving, which I'm okay with because I don't like it when the synopses like tell too much. Um, so I can't really tell what's going on with this. Is it, is it, is there a potential for a creature feature? Is it like mainly a haunted house story? Are there curses involved? Is there demons involved? <laughs> we don't know. So like I said, you know, I just kind of picked this up on a whim. The cover kind of reeled me in a little bit as you guys can kind of tell. Um, so I will also be doing a review on this book, um, at some point this year, but yeah, I just thought it was cool, thought it sounded neat. I did actually pick up three different books about Ed and Lorraine and the, well, it was books that they actually did. Now, if you are not a fan of Ed and Lorraine Warren, um, if you kind of feel like they're hoaxers, if that's even a word, or if you just feel like they're full of shit, then obviously this is not the book for you because it's gonna be written from like their perspective. But I am absolutely obsessed with their cases. I do feel like for the most part, they were honest about what went on. Um, but I don't know. Like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, for sure they were telling the truth because I don't know. For all I know, they just had everyone wrapped around their little finger. I mean, it's totally possible because the types of things that they investigated were just never proven for a fact. These things are very difficult to prove in hard facts. So the first one I picked up is called In a Dark Place. It is by Ed and Lorraine Warren. Um, they had several editors on the case. So let me just show you that cover. And they have several books. I am hoping to kind of collect them all. Like I said, I have three right now. I don't know if I'm gonna have all three of them listed in this part one haul, but eventually I will get to show you all of them. So the, this one, let's see. This story of the most terrifying case of demonic possession in the United States became the basis for the hit film, The Haunting in Connecticut, starring Virginia Madsen. Shortly after moving into their new home, the Snedeker, is it Snedeker? 
The Snedeker family is assaulted by a sinister presence that preys upon them one by one. Exhausting other resources, they turn to world-renowned demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren, the paranormal investigators portrayed in the blockbuster film The Conjuring. Duh. But even the Warrens have never encountered a case as frightening as this. No one warned the Snedekers that their new house was once an old funeral home, and their battle with inexplicable and savage phenomena has only just begun. What starts as a simple poltergeist soon escalates into a full-scale war between an average American family and the deepest, darkest forces of evil, a war this family can't afford to lose. Don't miss the blockbuster films based on the Warrens' true experiences. They list The Conjuring and the Annabelle. Obviously, there are way more Conjuring films now, and there's about to be another one in our midst, I believe on June 4th. So I'm excited. Anyway, so this is the first one. I want to say this is actually book one because they are numbered even though you don't have to read them in order. Um, but yeah, this was the first one that I picked up. I did get it off of Amazon. I really think this is going to be an interesting read. I can't wait to read all of them, so I will eventually get to this. Um, I will do a book review on it, but I'll probably do more of a demonology video on it and kind of get back to my get back to doing my demonology videos and discuss this case there. So yeah, the next one up is, of course, I had to get it, A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. So yeah, this book was recommended on a couple of different people that I follow. I don't remember if Merce from Harpies in the Trees recommended it. Um, I've probably seen Jordan Line Reads recommend it. There's a couple of other booktubers that I follow or that I just recently started following and I can't quite remember their channel names. So I'll link them down below as well. But um, anyway, let's read the synopsis on this one because this one just... I feel like this one is going to be a twisty turny little book. So yeah. The lives of the Barretts, a normal suburban New England family, are torn apart when 14-year-old Marjorie begins to display signs of acute schizophrenia. To her parents' despair, the doctors are unable to stop Marjorie's bizarre outbursts and subsequent descent into madness. As their home devolves into a house of horrors, they reluctantly turn to a local Catholic priest for help. Father Wanderly suggests an exorcism. He believes the vulnerable teenager is the victim of demonic possession. He also con contacts a production company that is eager to document the Barrett's plight for a reality television show. With John, Marjorie's father, out of work for more than a year and medical bills looming, the family reluctantly agrees to be filmed, never imagining that the possession would become an instant hit. When events in the Barrett household explode in tragedy, the show and the incidents it captures become the stuff of urban legend. Fifteen years later, a best-selling writer interviews Marjorie's younger sister, Mary. As she recalls those long-ago events from her childhood, she was just eight years old. Painful memories and long-buried secrets that clash with the television broadcast and the internet blogs begin to surface. This, I feel, is going to, like, kind of combine psychological horror with actual, like, demonic possession um, and a little bit of what I call spiritual horror. Um, I don't even think that's, like, a real subgenre. I just kind of, I kind of put demonic possession and certain, certain other stories that are, that run in a similar vein into, like, spiritual horror just because there's a certain feel to it that other horror genres just don't really have so very excited to read this it is a smaller read hopefully i can power through that in like half a week two to three days tops hopefully <laughs> fingers crossed so i'm very excited about that this one i actually picked up at my local walmart a couple of days ago it was only like ten dollars um it's called before the devil fell by neil olson another little read i'm very excited about all the little reads because again I have a hard time focusing sometimes. All right, so this one says, it's been years since Will Connor has visited his hometown, a small village north of Boston. But when he's summoned home to care for his injured mother, he finds himself confronting a horrific incident that took place during one of her new age spirit circles. 
As he investigates the accident and looks deeper into his family's history, Will discovers forces much more sinister than his mother's modern-day coven and a tradition of witchcraft that can be traced back for centuries. Yes! <laughs> We want the witchcraft, we want the dark, creepy family history, and we're hoping that this ends up in a, in a demon-y way, in a very, like, demon way. Um, not to get too creepy on you guys, but that's just where I'm hoping it goes. Will it go there? I don't know. Like I've said before many times already, I haven't read any of these books before. So, we will see. The second um, Ed and Lorraine Warren book that I picked up is actually The Werewolf or just, you know, werewolf. Now this one, I believe, is the, the case that they are basing the, the Conjuring 3 on, which is the one coming out on June 4th. So I am highly anticipating that movie. Definitely excited to read the actual case, like the real case. So let's see. This is the harrowing true account of William Ramsey, a mild-mannered Englishman, loving husband and father, and nearly lifelong prisoner of a demonic and primal force inside him. With the horrifying power to erase the fine line between civilized man and vicious animal, world-renowned demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren brought their unique expertise to Great Britain to investigate the shocking case that captured headlines, terrified the public, and turned one otherwise ordinary man's life into the stuff of nightmares. What caused the bone-chilling dreams that ultimately tore their way into the waking world of William Ramsey? What kind of blood-curdling transformation did an ER nurse, a police officer, and Ramsey's own wife behold when something violently untamed and unstoppable raged from deep within to make a man become a monster? And when medical science couldn't help William Ramsey, where else was there to turn except to the veterans of countless campaigns against otherworldly evil? But even the Warrens would find their formidable skills severely tested confronting the dark soul of a savage beast. So like I said, I think this is the case that they're basing the new Conjuring movie off of, but I'm not 100% sure. I know that in the Conjuring movies they do take certain liberties to change certain things about the real cases. So is it the same one? I think so, but I might be wrong. So let me know if you know. And the last one we're going to get to in part one is one that I am so excited for. I may honestly push this towards the beginning of my read list because I have been that excited to finally get this. It is The Ritual by Adam Neville. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I actually saw the movie on Netflix first, so in a way I kind of feel like I'm cheating because I kind of know how it ends, but sometimes the movies differ wildly from the book, so for all I know, maybe it ends differently we shall see. But in case you're not familiar with this story, I will read you the synopsis real quick. When four old university friends set off into the Scandinavian wilderness of the Arctic Circle, they aim to briefly escape the problems of their lives and reconnect with one another. But when Luke, the only man still single and living a precarious existence, finds he has little left in common with his well-heeled friends, tensions rise. With limited experience between them, a shortcut meant to ease their hike turns into a nightmare scenario that could cost them their lives. Lost, hungry, and surrounded by forest untouched for millennia, Luke figures things couldn't possibly get any worse. But then they stumble across a derelict building. Ancient artifacts decorate the walls and there are bones scattered upon the dry floors. The residue of old rites and pagan sacrifice for something that still exists in the forest. Something responsible for the bestial presence that follows their every step. As the four friends stagger in the direction of salvation, they learn that death doesn't come easy among these ancient trees. Yes, like just in every way imaginable, yes. <laughs> we have isolation horror, we have out in the forests, we have creature feature, we have some psychological tension and strain and strife between the people involved, we have like ancient pagan rituals going on, and if the book actually goes the way of the movie then I kind of already know who the creature or rather what the creature is. 
which I'm still I'm still gonna enjoy it regardless. So I am very excited so, to read that one. Um, like I said, I may end up pushing that one towards the beginning of my to read list for this year just because I've been waiting for it for a while. <laughs> so that's just part one of my recent horror book haul. I will be doing a part two um, within the, the near future. It might be a couple of videos before I get around to part two. But let me know what you guys think. Did you enjoy this video? If so, hit like. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video. Let me know what um, horror novels or any novels at all that you're planning on reading this year in lovely 2021. It is 21 still, right? We haven't already skipped to 2022 yet. I don't know. Um, but let me know what you guys are reading down in the comments below. And I will see you guys at the next video. Peace.